Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. There are many advantages to playing the violin without a shoulder rest, and many disadvantages to using a shoulder rest. Professor Jonathan Schwartz has an excellent lecture on video in which he explains this issue. I am indebted to him for many of the ideas in this video. First, you are not going to throw away your shoulder rest and suddenly free up your playing. There are issues that have to be addressed, the most important being shifting, particularly shifting downward. Without shifting, no one would even bother with a shoulder rest. This video addresses four aspects of holding the violin and shifting. The basic hold and body mechanics, holding the violin above fourth position and shifting, holding the violin below fourth position and shifting, and then shifting above and below fourth position. In all of these exercises, I shift between harmonics to minimize tension using the same bowing for every shift. So, down bow on the first note, up bow slurring between the two notes, in other words, shifting within the slur, and then down bow on the arrival note, up bow, shift back within the slur. Continue ad infinitum. Succinctly, down bow for the note, up bow shifting from note to note, down bow for the new note, up bow shifting from note to note. Use different finger combinations, starting with 3-3 three, three, and then adding all the other possibilities. 4-4, four, 4-3, four, four, 4-2, four, 4-3, etc., etc. So it's 4-4, 4-3, 4-2, 4-1, 3-4, 3-3, 3-2, 3-1. Uh, two four two three two 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 one one four one three one two one one. There are nine usable harmonics per string, four strings, and sixteen combinations of finger to finger. That's five hundred and seventy-six possibilities. For this video, I'll stick with a few illustrative examples. In the beginning, it might help to do these exercises with a non-slip material attached to the back of the instrument loop it over the button, buttonhole, or perhaps draped on your shoulder. Router pad or chamois both work really nicely. Use something thin so that you are only contacting the instrument through the pad with the collarbone, not the shoulder. The idea is to free up the shoulder, not to use it to clutch the instrument. Stand in an area where you are not likely to hit anything. Stand with both feet on the ground, holding the violin and bow at your side. Bend your knees slightly, relax your shoulders, relax your head. Imagine the head suspended from a thread by the crown, the chin slightly tucked. Wriggle it a bit to make sure it's relaxed. Karen Tuttle used to talk about talking position. Bend the knees, then swing the violin up so that it rests on just the right spot on your collarbone with the hand against the bout. Simultaneously, bring the bow up and rest it on the string. Keep the strings parallel to the floor, which brings the scroll ever so slightly above the chin rest. Keep the left shoulder down, relaxed, well away from the violin. Keep the head floating in talking position. Do not contact the chin rest. When you are comfortable with this, follow through with a down bow on the string of your choice. Do it several times to make a comfortable sequence. So. So, holding the violin above fourth position and shifting. So holding the violin, balance the violin on the collarbone, head floating in talking position without contact from the chin rest. Rest the violin on the thumb, which contacts the saddle, where the neck meets the body, on the pad of the thumb just above the thumb joint. So you can kind of see where I've, I'm holding the violin. Hold the scroll slightly higher than the chin rest. This becomes important. Get comfortable. Feel how light the violin is. Walk around a little bit. To shift above the fourth position, the thumb stays in the same place. At first, with a finger on your right hand, press down lightly on the bridge to snug the violin in place. You can try these resting the bow on the string without moving, using the weight of the bow to help snug the violin. The jaw should merely contact the chin rest without tension. It helps to tuck the 
chin in a bit. First, try it without bowing. Move the finger up and down on the string as if playing harmonics without pressing. As you shift, keep the thumb where it is, using the arm to shift so that the finger could play in either of the positions. Keep the left shoulder relaxed and away from the violin. When you shift, the violin should stay roughly in the same position, with the strings parallel to the floor, which brings the scroll slightly above the chin rest. Then move to playing harmonics. When you are comfortable with this, try all pairs of fingers on all strings. Better to do a few comfortably and correctly than to play every single combination. Below the fourth position, the left hand moves as it is holding the violin. It's actually more difficult to shift in these lower positions. Make an open V with the left hand and support the violin with both sides of the V on the little shelf created by the first joint of the thumb. When that is comfortable, slide the hand up and down the neck without pressing the fingers. The violin should stay on the same level, the strings parallel with the floor, the scrolls slightly elevated, the, the violin resting on the collarbone, the shoulders relaxed. It helps to have the bow. It helps to sort of snug the violin in place. It's a little bit of a weight, so the bowing helps shifting. So there you go. For the down bow, for the down shift, you have to slightly snug the uh, the chin, but you're not holding with the shoulder. That's incredibly important. When you're comfortable with this, shift using harmonics. There are four harmonics available below fourth position. On the D string, they are the locations of the stop notes B, A, G, and F sharp. Note, those aren't the notes that sound, those are the locations of the finger. Use the same bow pattern, down for the note, up for the shift, down for the note, up for the shift. Start with the third finger on the D string. When you are comfortable, move to all the strings and all the finger combinations below the fourth position. The challenge of shifting between above and below fourth positions is the transition between two different ways of holding with the left hand. This is particularly tricky when shifting downward. First, practice touching the third finger to the string from a location somewhere above the fourth position, violin balanced on the thumb, to second position, violin balanced on the V between the thumb and first. When descending, find the transition between the two as the hand snakes around the bat. You may have to spend some time clarifying this transition. Again, start with pressing a finger down lightly with, on the bridge, or you can use the weight of the bow. Then, move to shifting using harmonics, above the fourth to below the fourth, using all finger combinations. So. Once you are comfortable shifting using harmonics, move to stopped fingers. Rather than trying to practice every possible shift combination, take advantage of shifts in pieces to practice shifting clearly, directly, and softly while supporting the violin on the collarbone and the left hand. Practice each shift in both directions using the convenient down bow for the note, up bow shifting from note to note, down bow for the new note, up bow shifting from note to note. Shoulders relaxed, violin resting on collarbone and left hand, head relaxed straight in talking position with chin tucked just a bit to lengthen the spine, head mobile, strings parallel to the floor, feel a slight lift in the scroll and downward shifts. Run through these exercises daily and whenever you feel tense, especially while shifting. After a few days, you will find yourself entirely comfortable floating all over the violin without tension.